Hello everyone, I am John Hebler and I am an assistant professor at the University of Cincinnati. And today I'd like to give you a presentation about the professional development uh, project that I am currently researching and creating. Uh, and I am collaborating with a professor, another professor at the University of Cincinnati in DAP, which is basically the School of Design. So to give you a little uh, bit of overview of the project, um, currently my partner and I were creating a, an iPhone application um, where the user can basically interact with visuals and sounds and, and different um, environments where as this person does certain gestures, um, the sounds and the visuals change. And the whole, the whole point of uh, the app is that um, we are currently testing it so it can be a stress reducer. Um, as we all know that with everybody in technology today and things being very busy, um, it can be stressful. So our, our goal is basically to have a, an app that's very media rich with content. The user uses the app. Um, that person doesn't even know that it's reducing stress as they're creating visuals and different tones. So the purpose again is to reduce stress for the user while experience an interactive media rich environment. And again, this can be kind of similar to like playing a game or, or painting digital, digitally, or perhaps um, playing a new kind of instrument. So my background, I am a professional musician. I play uh, the electric and upright bass and piano. Um, and I've, I've been doing that my entire life. And my expertise is uh, in music technology. So my degree, my, my grad degree is in music tech. So what I'm currently trying to do and what my partner and I are researching is new ways of, of creating through apps for the user and to be able to share those experiences um, with each other and kind of shift out of one mental state into a more uh, peaceful or calming state. So this, the way that this started, um, because pre-production is a big part of this, um, I had an idea basically uh, when I started a couple of years ago and I approached a person who was a visual artist and I said, hey, you know, what do you think about some kind of idea where we could use some tones or perhaps some visuals to help people uh, to, to reduce stress and to maybe kind of shift mental states? So at, at that point, it was just an idea. We just kicked it around. It seemed kind of elaborate. Um, in the beginning, we were talking about using brain sensors um, and, and it was a big deal. So we continued to meet on a normal basis and we came up with the treatment um, for an app that perhaps we could get funding for. So at that point, and we did a year of, of application designing, and then at that point we decided to write a lot of grants. Um, and for those of you that write grants, we know that this can be kind of a never ending process. So to be exact, in 2014, um, Professor Emily Verba from DAP uh, she was the interaction design expert. She joined forces with myself and we started basically a series of meetings and a, a variety of different concepts that we could create um, or put together to make this iPhone app. In the beginning, we started meeting with art therapists and social workers and neuroscientists, and we were really trying to find a path for us that would make sense in, in pursuing this process. What was good for us is that we talked with the director at CET, which is the public broadcasting service in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where the University of Cincinnati is. And that person thought that our project seemed very interesting. So we were able to gain a spot, a national spot on a program called ArtsBridge. And this was a, a pretty big turning point for us because it was getting the word out. We were getting the word out of what we wanted to do, what we hoped to accomplish, and we were getting exposure. So here is a quick segment um, from that clip. Since I was a child, I've always known that I wanted to do something with art. And so I went on to study graphic design at the University of Cincinnati. And there I met several very inspiring professors, two of uh, which were wacky Swiss uh, graphic designers who ultimately inspired me to eventually study my master's in Basel, Switzerland. What I became interested in was um, the idea that we're innately drawn to the golden ratio in two-dimensional formats like painting 
or three-dimensional formats like architecture. So I was interested in what happens when you apply the golden ratio to time. At a very early age, I felt very strongly connected um, to, to music. As I started my undergrad, I, I went here uh, in the electronic media department and um, really got into digital tools and, and technology. And I found there, there was a really great connection between music and the digital tools. So in grad school at IUPUI, my main focus of study was uh, music technology. And I, I really uh, started working heavily with music performance and sensors and, and how technology can enhance um, or affect a performance. Early on when, when uh, I received the position to be an assistant professor in electronic media division, I had a colleague um, and his wife worked in, in DAP and she kept saying, you need to, you need to meet Emily, you guys need to, to kind of connect and, and use your expertise and, and do something because I think between the two of you, you could probably um, embark on some kind of, you know, uh, research project. So I put it off for quite a while, maybe a year, and then eventually I thought, you know what, this, this makes sense because Emily's in the, the DMC, the Digital Media uh, Collaboration, and so am I. We're able to make progress because we're working together as a team. So it's so much nicer than just working in a vacuum by yourself. So for example, recently John created some sound ideation that he then passed to me and I was able to create visual data visualizations off of those sound studies. So we're able to sort of toggle uh, between our expertise and get much further than we would if we were working in isolation. Currently we're working on a, an iPad application that it, and it goes along with hardware. We are collaborating with a bioinformatics company that produces a brain sensing headset. And the way that this works is that they've allowed people to develop, you know, for different platforms so you can use the brain sensing hardware. So what we're doing right now is, is we're developing an iPad where a user can control the media-rich experience, so that the visuals and the sounds simply from their own EEG data, so basically with, with their brains. The idea is to target patients with uh, general anxiety disorder and to help them kind of retrain their brain through, a, through an experience that is, is media-rich and that is all controlled through EEG data. What's significant about it is that these patients can either work with a psychotherapist in therapy or just on their own to shift their emotional and behavioral states. And the thing, the unique thing is that it's all their unique brain data that they're uh, essentially playing with. So it's, a, it's an immersive, media-rich experience where they're actually feeling like they're playing but also practicing mindfulness and self-healing. It's different for the, the patient and it, than it is for the therapist. For the patient, I would say the design approach is very abstract. The user will be able to choose, choose their represent, method of representation, how they want their data to be represented based on their preference, and be able to manipulate it also in, in a way that they would like. Whereas the therapist's information or visualizations are much more analytical and straightforward. What's great about teaching, being involved in teaching and research is that the two can inform one another. So I can bring things to the classroom that I am pursuing with John and I can do projects with them that relate closely or loosely to themes of data visualization or information design. And then through that, I'm also informed by what they come up with. I, I think my motivation to, to produce art or music, I, it's, it's something that I have kind of always felt that's in my blood, so to speak. And there's something about the, the creative process for me that's really kind of liberating and it's kind of an unexplainable uh, feeling. And then I think, um, sharing that outcome or sharing that product or whatever that it is that you created, um, there's, there's a sense of really great satisfaction in that. 
And ultimately, what that helped us to do is to continue to network and to continue to write grants. So we wrote numerous grants, whether it was five pages, 20 pages, 50 pages. And we, at, an, at a decent point um, in the process, we received around $3,700 in, in funds so we could create a prototype. One of the challenges that we had in this whole project was that we were talking about research by doing. So we would create things and then we wanted to test them. And in order to be successful and in order for people to realize, you know, really what we were doing, we had to have some kind of prototype that people could see and where they could interact and, and hear um, the different tones that were generated. So we, we hired a developer um, who was the head of the infotech department at UC, and we worked with him and his staff to create this prototype. So my partner, Professor Verba, she did the visuals and the design layout. And then I did all the sound design and the composition. So the prototype, it's a basic iPhone app with two gestures. You can tap and you can swipe. When you tap, visuals appear, sound uh, is synced with the visuals, and a music composition starts in the background. When you swipe, the action kind of follows the swipe. So if I swipe left, the visuals go left. If I go up, they go up. And again, those gestures are also in sync with tones that are generated as the user interacts with the app. So the visuals have basic shapes uh, and transitions at this state in the prototype. We will advance that when we continue. Um, in the sound, it's all original. There's a variety of tones, and there are about six-second tones that are called up when the user interacts with the app. So what happens is the user taps, the music starts, the composition starts, a visual appears, and you have a synced sound or tone that happens with the visual. So you can repeat the action, you can tap as many times as you want, and every time you tap, you have a variation of the visual and of the tone. When you swipe, again, the action follows. So you could swipe left, right, up, or down, and the movement of the visual will follow that action of the finger of the user. And then you have a tone, a six second tone that is generated with the swipe. So you can combine gestures or you can do them individually. Right now in the prototype, there's only two, but you could tap and have things appear or swipe and continue to have a variety of visuals that transition into other visuals and also uh, sounds that are synced. So here is a short, uh, roughly about a 60 second uh, video of the prototype. So after creating the prototype, um, the, the purpose of this now was that we had a concept that we could show people that was in the form of an application. Now people could see it and feel it and touch it and say, OK, now we kind of understand more of what the musician and the artist, so to speak, are talking about. This was really great for us because it was a visual piece for potential grants. And the whole idea was to get more money so we could perfect this uh, and eventually or hopefully bring it to market. It was also a visual piece for our team members. We've expanded our team and we've met with psychologists and therapists and to in order to really show people what we were talking about, it was good to have some kind of prototype demo or video where people could see this. And ultimately, it clarified our direction for long term because the more we interacted with it and the more we passed it around, we realized that we wanted to add certain things and subtract certain things in the final uh, product of the app. So the results for us, which was really wonderful at this point, is that we recently received a 23.7K or $23,700 more in grant funding, 
which now has taken us to the stage where we can fully develop a final product. This also allowed us to add more people to our team, uh, which I previously talked about. And it also allows us to continue to refine this and test it with beta testers and ourselves and tweaking for the long-term functionality. So the current stage of this professional development research project is we are in phase two of development. Currently, we are creating lots of media content. I am the media creator for the sound design, the tones, the original composition, and my partner, she is creating all the visuals and the animations and the logos and the graphics uh, for the layout of the application. So we are currently doing that. We're adding gestures. We're adding about 16 more gestures. So it's not just swipe and, and tap. And we are also um, doing the patent process, um, which we are teaming up with certain people in the University of Cincinnati to figure out how to patent, copyright this, and make sure that we are covered um, in the legal area. So the end goal, our end goal right now is to complete the app by July of 2017 and to continue to test and revise and by September 2017 have a final product that hopefully will be ready to uh, go to the market. So in October, our goal is to distribute this to the Apple Store and get some users involved in our app. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, again, I am John Hebler, an assistant professor from the University of Cincinnati. And if you have any questions or you're, you're curious about the app, uh, please send me an email or give me a phone call. I'll be happy to talk to you more about this and, and the process. So thanks again and enjoy the rest of the conference.